In today's video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the tropics where there is a whole lot of concerns out there. We have Tropical Storm Gabrielle, which is now expected to become a major hurricane. Thankfully, not expected to impact very many people at all unless they're out on a boat or something. This is not expected to really directly impact any land mass for a long, long time. Uh, as you can see, this one expects to curve out to the east. We do have two threats now underneath it, and we're going to be deep diving into those as well. Uh, the precipitation pattern over the next couple of weeks still looks pretty optimistic. Again, good, not great. Same theme as yesterday. And we do still have signals for cooler air into the eastern United States, especially into early October. So let's go ahead and dive into these tropics. I couldn't even help myself but start talking about it early on. Uh, and again, Gabrielle curving out to the east, still pretty much what we expected yesterday. It's expected to get a little bit more intense here. We can see on satellite imagery here, it's got uh, a lot of nice swirl going on. Uh, even maybe an eye trying to develop. Um, it's a category one right now, so it's a little early for that. But by later tonight into tomorrow morning and through the day tomorrow, we do expect category two and three status. So this one should intensify a lot overnight and into tomorrow morning. Again, uh, something that is just fascinating, we can even say it's beautiful um, in, in this case especially because we're not really talking about this one in, in the terms of a threat to a landmass. Uh, so this is one of the ones that are best for people that are fascinated with it because you don't have to feel guilty about feeling fascinated by it and everything. Uh, we do have these two threats underneath and... Pretty concerning stuff. We knew there was one. Uh, now there is two uh, distinct areas. And actually, this kind of blob of activity here in the very eastern part of all of these areas is this yellow area that's expected. I'm taking kind of the mean average of the middle of it, but kind of move over uh, the areas in the eastern Caribbean, Puerto Rico. Uh, again, the, the very, you got to remember the cone here. And this is just a risk cone. This isn't a track cone, uh, you know, for a developed storm. But really, they expect the center to be somewhere in between this type of a trajectory uh, and anywhere in the middle. The direct middle is probably the most likely outcome. And it's easy to see how this could be pretty concerning to a lot of the Caribbean. And also, uh, for a lot of areas in the southeast, we're going to be watching this one very closely because the current trajectory isn't the best isn't the best we do have this area well i'll talk about it this is a 10 percent chance over the next two days of development and a 20 percent chance of development over the next seven days so still a relatively low risk of development on this yellow one but the most concerning track out of any of the three now this middle one is the highest risk of development with a zero percent chance over the next two days but a 50 50 chance over the next seven days. So again, days three through seven is when we would expect this one to develop. And this one uh, likely could take a very similar track a little bit further north than the yellow area is the current thinking. Uh, and really, it's these areas of storminess out here uh, that we expect to eventually move into the area of potential development. And that's why we're so far away from this one developing. Looking at satellite imagery, it's important to note as we're a little past the peak of hurricane season, but it's really a slow drop off. So we're still near the peak. We have a area of disturbance here, area of disturbance here, just about to move off of Western Africa. So there is plenty in the pipeline as far as potential tropical systems. And it does appear like we're about to move into a very, very active period for tropical activity so likely over the coming weeks we are going to be pretty much continuously talking about these threats uh, a couple fascinating things just to just just to note is like this little swirl up area is kind of taking note of and really we just have this kind of southward moving flow just to the west of that area and we have this northward moving flow flowing with the storm here gabrielle that is and that just is enough to create this flow with this little tiny area here. Very interesting uh, to see that. And another thing is just all these pop-up thunderstorms over northern South America. Uh, really, really crazy look. And that's almost a daily occurrence for a lot of these areas. Just really fascinating. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move past the tropics. 
Uh, again, we're going to be talking about this over the coming days, and we're going to move into the model guidance and really, really dive into the precipitation and the temperatures. Now, looking at the 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, which will go from the 27th of September to the 1st of October here, we can see coast to coast warmth expected for the most part. Really, really hard to find any areas near average, pretty much just southern Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and honestly, interestingly enough, even with near normal conditions, these areas are likely much hotter than most everywhere else that's above average. So just a really warm look around the nation for this time frame. And for now, on the 8 to 14 day outlook, September 29th through October 5th, not much changes. I do expect at some point between like the, the 3rd and 10th of October is when we would expect a cooler flow of temperatures to move in to the central and eastern states so we're going to be watching for that again it is only a signal at this point so we're not saying that this is a sure thing uh or even like a really 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 high probability uh yet but this is the beginning signs of a big change we've been in this warmer pattern for a good 10 days now we expect a good 10 more days of it but there is signs that that switch back to a more seasonal or even cooler than normal pattern would be happening around that first week to maybe into the 10th of October. So we're going to be talking about that a lot throughout the video as well. Looking at the past 20 days of temperatures, I've gotten a lot of comments from people in these areas that are still blue saying, you know, it's been so hot in September. There's no way this data is correct. I promise you this data is correct. I mean, obviously I don't make the data, so I can't a hundred percent say, uh, but this all does come from the National Weather Service. This is recorded numbers, officially recorded numbers, and this is the data. Uh, now, it was much, much further than normal as far as temperatures for the first five to seven days of the month. We're talking in most of these instances 15, 20, 25 degrees below normal. And since that point, and we've warmed up, we've been mostly, you know, three, four, five, six, seven degrees above normal. Each day that is 20, 25 degrees below normal is enough to make up for like three, four, five of those days that are a little bit above normal. So if you think about it, even though it was, it wasn't cooler for a majority of the days, but it was so much cooler during those few days that it is enough to swing the averages in this direction. We'll of course see how the month ends off, but that is how these averages work. And that is why it might be appearing cooler than what you feel like you felt but this is just the raw numbers for the entirety of, well, in this case, the 2nd of September through the 21st, because we only have 15, 20, and 30 day periods to look at here, but we will be able to look at the whole month very, very soon and kind of get an, a perspective of how things end up. Looking at the storminess, uh, we're going to see activity uh, pretty all over the place. I mean, we see the Rockies, Four Corner States here seeing activity tomorrow. Also, a lot of the deeper south. Uh, and Midwest, it's deeper south, Midwest, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, interior, mid-Atlantic, interior, northeast here, parts of the southeast. There is some dry pockets, and unfortunately for tomorrow, the dry pockets are really the same as they've been for months. So the areas that need it the most are seeing it the least tomorrow. But I promise you, it doesn't stay like that on the model run. We actually do get a pretty healthy amount of precipitation in the areas that need it. Uh, and Tuesday is one of those days, I mean, we start to see this spreading further eastward into areas like New York and New England and areas in Pennsylvania that really need the, pe the, the precipitation, the deep south a little drier on this particular date. We have a low here over Oklahoma, some thunderstorm activity. There is severe weather happening out there today. Wouldn't be surprised if that's happening for the next few days. Plains the Midwest, keep that in mind. Uh, by Wednesday, we start to see some of this thunderstorm activity spread into the deeper south locations. Again, areas that really need this precipitation. There is still some showers around for these mid-Atlantic and northeast locations. So not the worst day in the world for these drought-stricken areas. Thursday, though, things get interesting. This low is over the Great Lakes. We have a little bit of a cold front here. Warm front trying to set up. And because of this, we get a lot of this cold front activity impacting the deep south, southeast, mid-Atlantic. We're going to see some of this precipitation spread into the northeast for mid to late next week. And this is all just really, really much needed. Friday here, I mean, look at that. We see New England, New York State, Mid-Atlantic, Southeast, all seeing really healthy, heavy showers, maybe even some thunderstorms for some of these spots. This is just all incredible news for areas that really could use the precipitation. I mean, this is deeply saturated for the Southeast and Mid-Atlantic. This is phenomenal. 
Uh, by Saturday, it's all kind of passed through. The original low is a lot weaker, but it is over New England, and we're seeing showers still left over. Again, areas that really, really need it. Uh, as we keep going towards Monday here on the 29th, we're left much drier. Uh, we do see by Tuesday here on the 30th, we get this kind of cooler flow moving into the east. Um, this particular model run is not quite as cold as what we saw yesterday. We saw a full-on Arctic blast yesterday from this model. We talked about how a typhoon out by Japan is actually the thing that is causing the rippling of the jet stream and everything. So you can check that video out. It was very interesting, and it's at the beginning of the video. So you only have to watch the first few minutes to hear that explanation. But it is very interesting. That was, again, yesterday's video. Uh, again, this 12Z model run is much milder it still shows cooler than normal conditions but it isn't a full-blown arctic blast like you'd expect this is a huge step back from yesterday uh, we are going to look at a model run that is just the one before this one later on on the temperatures that was following suit with what we were seeing yesterday so perhaps this is an outlier we're going to watch both but interesting to see wednesday the first of october you can again see this overall ridge over the west and central and then a trough into the east but again this is going to be near normal to slightly below normal temperatures not the hugely below normal temperatures that we talked about yesterday if this particular model run is correct but you can expect some back and forth this is still 10 days out this is still even you know 10 to 15 days out in some instances so this is going to be a battle this is not going to be like instantly uh you know perfect you know and stay that way for days and days and days we can expect some back and forth and that's how it always is total precipitation again deep south i'm still concerned uh but these areas up here are looking much improved there is a couple of dry spots in there but the overall trend here is very close to normal amounts of precipitation which is good not great but definitely needed uh southeast also looks really deeply saturated so looking at the compared to normal numbers the most below average in the at least East Coast area would be North Carolina, Virginia, and up the Mid-Atlantic coastline, especially this area like where I live. Uh, this is maybe an inch or two below that, below average. Most everywhere else in these browns is a fraction of an inch below average or really negligible. Um, so definitely good news. The Deep South is also multiple inches below average, though. This is not very good news at all. The most above average areas is going to be Georgia and South Carolina here. And then also a lot of the plains into the Midwest and Ohio Valley. Uh, but mostly a drier look for the nation. Really, really crazy. Looking at the 0Z run of the European model, the temperatures here. Again, we saw what the 12Z model run is showing on the precipitation. Again, the temperatures would have been much less below average. But when we look at this model, uh, we still see that really, really rich colder air pattern coming from way up in the arctic i still get comments every single day like these are not arctic blasts it's coming from the arctic it's blasting down i don't really know what other uh like metric you could really use uh for a term that really doesn't have a exact requirement right it is just a term so uh in this case it's an arctic air mass blasting down into a lot of these eastern locations arctic plus blast i mean really you just got to put it together guys looking a little further we can see this does dip further down into the eastern states and this is a significant cooler pattern for the first week of october again on the zero z model run with 10 15 20 degrees below normal in a lot of these green locations here for a couple of days and we really stay cooler and we're all we're still cooler by the sixth and it looks like another one is kind of charging up because we have a lot of warmth over the west coast this is going to encourage for these to keep swinging in and bringing cooler air to the east if that does take place. Now, I want to show you that 12Z model run and show you the difference. So, again, we get these cooler than normal conditions, but it's not blasting in from the Arctic. We get more of like a cold front directly from the west with near normal to slightly below normal conditions here for late into September. And then as we kind of keep going, we get another one, a kind of backdoor cold front, you know, little milder it still comes from the arctic region and it still blasts down you could even call it an arctic blast but really this is a very short-lived uh you know weaker cooldown compared to what we saw on the zero z model run so we're gonna have to wait and see again you can expect some back and forth but we will see what ends up being right and i want to use this moment to again remind you that we are trying to show signals and things in the long range because that's all you can do in the long range i can't tell you what's going to happen 
14, 21 days from now with certainty, but I can tell you what we are seeing signs of and what looks the most likely and kind of walk you through the process of every single model run and what the trends are. And that's the best way to get valuable information in the long range. Um, if you try to forecast the weather and you try to be perfect, you end up being wrong because it's an incomplete science. That's just what it is. So we have to, to take the information and play the odds games and really take everything into consideration. Um, you have to approach it realistically, and that is my approach. And I know it's very different from pretty much anybody. I don't know if there's anybody that really uses my approach, but I've been doing it for years, and it's, it's valuable to a lot of people um, that understand it. And it's been uh, very cool. I, I think that it is it is good to be different, especially when there's so many weather sources. Um, I, I really like the approach that we've had. The 12Z, or this is actually the the 60 GFS. Uh, let's look at the 18Z. This is the most recent one. Uh, we do get this like cold front again. We get this warmer air pushing up the west. There is cooler air trying to fight it up there from Canada, as you can see. And then we've got this rich Arctic air just sitting right here. Uh, but we're going to see if it's going to be able to move its way in or if it's just going to kind of get rejected. It does move in. It does move into the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and Northeast. But a lot of these more central and deep south locations kind of miss out on it. It kind of just skirts into the northeast and that's it. Meanwhile, this cold air ends up winning out west and this warm air gets pushed back and that's likely going, going to encourage this area to move back in after that cool down is said and done. So this would be a situation where maybe the cool down is a little more short lived. Interesting. Definitely seeing different scenarios. And I'm very excited to see which one wins out. Again, we upload every single day, so be sure to subscribe. And we'll get to the bottom of all of this together, I promise. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload, so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.